Okay, we're recording this. I I guess this should this shouldn't be um too much to deal really. I mean, this is a game where uh yours truly has played, so it's not a game where I don't know anything about it. And on second thought the bloody thing might not even load. <laughs> we'll see. Ah. So far, I'm getting very stoked about me new Windows 10 setup. I just I just upgraded from um, Windows 7 to Windows 10, and I after I got the hopefully the, the Wi-Fi issues fixed, uh, couldn't be happier. Couldn't be happier. You couldn't make up a happy camper of me, even if you didn't try. So, there you go. And funnily enough, I'm actually watching the OBS thing as this thing loads. And it's loading pretty cool, I, I should say. So, um, I decided to... This game, I, I, this game is by far the game I've played the most hours on Steam. By far. No other game I played or I have on Steam even comes close to this game in number of hours played. You have no idea. So, I decided to play a little, but I or I'm, I'm actually was thinking about some stuff I was doing and a little testing I decided to do because, eh, uh, because, let's be honest here, if you want some quality gameplay where you really accomplish something amazing, you either watch Danny46 something, or Scott Manley, or HOC Game, or no Marv, no, those guys, they accomplish cool things in KSP, but not the rest of us. Or if you if you want to stretch that far, I don't want to go for someone I don't know, really famous. Probably one F Jeff. You know, has done some KSP in a time because most people who have done KSP, apart from Scott Manley and you know Danny, uh, it's Danny forty six six two if I'm not wrong. Um, they and Scott Manley, they all they all gone past the initial because this is the uh, freaking release a Ker Kerbal Space Program no version 1.04.861 which I have my volume slider settings settings all right so the volume game can be as loud as everything so uh, so far the addition you guys could have is female Kerbals uh, which was a feature that a ton of people requested as of late because some people say oh I don't agree you only have male Kerbals it should be female Kerbals because I have female astronauts and shit yes and so they did uh, I did some sightseeing before that before doing a recording or I did several recordings prior to this one so Nothing I've seen is new to me, so I've never uh, I checked and uh, I yeah I I had this game since version version point point twenty actually so yeah I've been with the uh, development of it for quite a bit well being in development I don't know suggesting things maybe uh, I don't know. I don't personally think their forums are a welcome place for people who, eh, yeah, want to criticize the game based on half-assed assumptions. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people do that, but let's get this over with. So, what I'll do in this particular video, assuming I don't blow it out of proportion, considering I have a registered account, which means I can make videos longer than an hour which is people's worst nightmare. Some people like to do that, like I did. You know, have a, your, you register your account, do verification, and you can do videos in theory as long as you want. So, here's our Space Center. 
So okay, so what we'll do here is a small testing I was doing prior to the fact, right? So what this test will measure hopefully is how high a Kerbal can free fall and reduce its speed using its own rocket boosters without dying. I mean, underwater, I believe the highest I ever pushed on this particular install of KSP was 6 kilometers. Yes, I managed to have one Kerbal falling from 6 kilometers high. And while thrusting from 100 meters off the ground, he managed to survive a free fall of 6 kilometers high. So, what we'll do here is we'll actually make a smaller rocket that will test this theory out. So, so technically, uh, I'm actually going to open a ca uh, not not a calendar, damn it, a calculator on my phone. Oh, gee, really? Oh no, she. Oh no. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. One second. Really? Why everyone decides to message me when I'm recording videos? I have no fucking clue. Okay. So, what are we gonna do here is essentially uh, we're gonna do a um, vehicle that will just launch and take a Kerbonaut with it and uh, will uh, test you know, landings and stuff like that on it. Uh, so, we're just gonna be, you know, slightly... Which one is the smallest one? That's oh, this one. Uh, okay, so what are we gonna do is this testing which will showcase us how high a Kerbal can uh, go by without um, dying, essentially, right? So this will be our base platform. We're gonna put the engines on top, so we don't have the we don't run the risk of you know a Kerbal getting stuck or be killed by the engines. So we're gonna put the tank. What we're gonna do is actually we're gonna put those Kerbals as close to the ground as we can. These are not ideal, but these are the, the shortest. These these are the shortest ones, shortest landing legs you could get. You could probably adjust from here or, or, or another, but this is our option. Okay, so. Um, we should probably do a plate or somewhere. We could probably do a two by two structural panel like this and have it angled up now. It maybe for a next project if we eventually progress further. So let's get it on with our I mean I don't really need a large thing here because I only need to take this can along with um so maybe use just half fuel. And with a uh, no, not this, not this one, really. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, we have those new pieces and everything. So yeah, we just need a nose cone. Now we're gonna put, I believe, four engines in it. Oh, a thud liquid engine. Actually, we're just gonna put two, really, because I don't know. This thing is fairly light, and yeah, as you can see, we're gonna put here. So we certify that there is no way a Kerbin will get caught in the engines or the ship. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna average our height, which is why I brought a calculator up, which you can't see is on my phone. My phone's off screen, or is off camera, really. If I had a larger screen, I could actually put both on screen, so layers or something on OBS, but I don't have that. I don't have that, so. 
Okay, so we have our spacecraft here, which is loaded with... Uh, let's do Jebediah, because we're not doing anything interesting, really, so, launch. Uh, first thing we'll measure, really, uh, because, because we have to average the distance. Because launch pad is uh, about about 80 meters off the ground, really, so we have to average less distance, really. As you can see, we're 73 foot above the ground, so before we do anything... Oh uh, yeah, we're uh, so for... Not sure I did it on my phone, so... For every distance we do... Uh, we're actually gonna take off 73 from it because that's where we left off so for smaller increments smaller speeds I'm actually gonna have Jebediah off like this and I'll let go myself from distances for instance and also I have to add distance so uh, if I wanna test him going from I don't know maybe let's see I actually have to do calculus Jesus Christ uh, yes uh, let's test tw uh, 50 meters off the ground which means I have to let go from 123 meters off the ground uh, since it's a short distance I'll have time to activate my rocket boosters because I'll be uh, kind of a lackluster stuff but if my calculations seem, seem right, if I go down straight, I'll just bounce off the ground and nothing will happen. Right? But, yeah. But before I do that, I actually have to activate the damn rocket, otherwise it won't take off. Um, let's actually start from, from zero. So we got a gauge on the distance necessary to take this rocket off the ground. It has to be as slow as possible, so we have as much control as possible. So, we're gonna let go at 123 meters. Right? So, this will so sort of accurately gauge our landing if we go from that if we fall from 100 meters because I'm taking off the distance or actually I'm summing the distance so our speed will raise slowly right it will raise slowly I'm doing this because because I, I want to have some sort of control of it so four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 15, 16, 70, 80, 90, okay, done. Let go at 128, essentially. Oh, I, I think that may be time for me to put my jet back on and thrust. And bonk. We survived. We survived 128 meters, and that's... Stand up. Stand up, Jebediah. We know, we know you're alive. There we go. That's our rocket. There we go. So one me 100 meters. We're good. Now, uh, problem is uh, the way for me to check it off. As you can see, there's a 72. So for me to average the distance I fell from, from now on, regardless of me averaging, because I, I can't let go at the exact moment, because I'm... Uh, holding to a rocket which is accelerating which means that as soon as I let go I still carry some momentum from the rocket so what I have to do is actually uh, meet a uh, subtract 72 meters from the distance I fell from and that will be how high I fell from essentially so let's revert to launch so uh, yeah So we determined the launch pad is 72 meters off the ground. So I'm just one meter off the ground at this point. So 
Okay, now we know that the frugally slow speed... Hopefully we're gonna turn off SAS. Now let's try... Um, 100 meters. I mean, I, I don't want to put too much commentaries. I think the distances, the distances I go on the ground, I think we'll probably have a threshold from when I go on the ground or something, depending on how high the speed I go. As soon as I reach 50 meters per second, I won't be able to do launching like this. Right? Uh, I'll actually have to let go as soon as I leave on, so yeah. Okay, 172 it is, right? Yes, there we go. But as you can see, we go from a little higher due to you know, certain constraints and such. So, going down, going down, and yeah, we went off the launch. Actually, uh, it was 128. So let's see, 128, 128 minus 67, which means we fell from 61 meters. It's not high enough. So and apparently we fell offset for some reason. Maybe because our rockets kind of twisted us a bit. I'll tell you that I safely tested this from. A uh, Kerbal going from up to a thousand meters, but now let's do some extreme Some extremes here. Let's see if a Kerbal can survive a 10 kilometer drop from Air to ground essentially. I'm not even gonna touch anything I'm just gonna turn on SAS and thrust the way it is Let's see, I know they survive from one kilometer, but it, let's let's test 10,000 or 10 kilometers. 10,000 kilometers a bit is off the atmosphere, so yeah. As you can see, my rocket is doing some sort of gyrating, which means how may not land on the same place I left from, but we'll see. At this current speed I'm going, EVA will essentially, I, I won't have enough muscle to hold onto the rocket to, um, oh, I ran out of fuel, Jesus, eight, nine, five hundred, okay. This should be enough, okay, we're landing off five kilometers, should have enough time to put up here. Our boosters, that's our rocket. As you can see, we still had a lot of momentum, but I decided... Okay, so we're doing 5, uh, five 7, 10, right? Okay, minus 72. Yes, we should be dropping from 5.638 kilometers. Which is almost 6 kilometers high. Look how high we are. Uh, let's see, if my calculation seems right, it will be wise for us to stop or to start thrusting with our jetpacks at um, one kilometer off the ground. I'm just taking safe margins here because I don't know, I never tested this high on solid ground. Although I can assure that on water it does work. Or let's do the Eterno stuff from 100 meters or 500 meters. I mean, we, we should have enough fuel. I think we have enough 
there's our rocket. I think we have enough EVA propellant for uh, to sustain drop for, for for one kilometer, but I don't know. Our rocket will reach the ground before us. Uh, I'm actually talking as assuming I land exactly on the launch pad does because I'm t I'm trying to land on flat ground which may not happen as you can see second test I landed on something else I landed on a slope which may actually decelerate me a little bit uh, uh, by this time I actually think I am in terminal velocity because yeah See, that's a rocket. Bye, rocket. Yeah, we're not accelerating anymore, so, so we just reached terminal velocity. That's a lonely drop, though. Eh, but it's Jebediah. Look how happy he is. Yeah, he likes to drop from high altitudes. Just to test if his jetpack will keep him from dying. Mm-hmm. And oh, apparently she didn't message me anymore. But okay. Yep, yep. Terminal velocity. We're not go. We're not going any faster. Mhm. Mm let's see. At this rate, yeah. Let's actually do from one thousand. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to scatter my chances to prove that a bug works or something like that. Okay, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There we go. I'm just looking at my EVA propellant fuel. Keep in mind, I'm just pressing shift, which means I'm just thrusting upwards or against the gravity. Uh, now that I checked, I need more fuel to go higher, so yeah. Oh gee, I, I have a ton of fuel. I sh sh should have, it probably should have thrusted, as you can see, I'm not gonna, oh gee. I may not actually survive if I don't drop on a, oh yeah, I'm dropping on a slope. Oh, fingers crossed. We did survive! Ha <laughs> ha! So it dropped from even higher, actually. Um, one five seven, well, five seven ten minus sixty seven, right? Oh, sorry, not, not. Yeah, we actually dropped from five six four three, but we survived. We. There we go. Isn't this motherfucker resistant or what? And there, and that's actually that's actually run. Wait a second, store this. That's actually watch them. That's a piece of our rocket right there. Must be a landing lag or something. I don't know. Let's meet it. There we go. It appears to be a landing lag. Yep. Two landing legs. Yep. They didn't last long. Yep. Two landing legs. I survived the landing. My ship did not. <laughs> Okay, so now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back to the VAB or the vehicle assembly building and w We actually need extra tanks to go higher or a higher tank actually Actually, we need more tanks So or let's, let's actually put a higher tank Let's actually do it uh, as a favor and actually put a the problem is that we have to kind of demise and average certain things because if I make this If 
If I make this too high, this will actually be heavier, which means it won't take off as easily. So there you go. That's our second experiment. Now that we did five, now that we did five thousand, we should we shall try going from ten thousand or four ten thousand. Right? Yeah. Well, let me actually erase the distance. Yeah, I'm gonna record the distance before I fell, and then I'm gonna subtract it by how high I land off the ground, and that and that will be my fall distance. Okay. Turn on SAS. Oh, as you can see, rocket's a little bit heavier with extra engine added to it. But we'll see. No, it's only the distance I I I start losing vertical velocity. That that counts as the measure test for quality. I mean I may kinda average from ten thousand but yeah. I mean it's not possible for me to determine or I think it is but involves calculations and we're just doing this for fun, we're not doing this for calculations. No, oh, I may not actually have enough fuel for 10,000. Mm. Or I need faster accelerating engines or something, I don't know. Uh, I think the highest challenge out of this would actually be check if a Kerbal can survive re-entry and then free fall landing which is, is yeah or if a Kerbal can survive going from um, returning for a Kerbal station Kerbal station Kerbal stationary orbit I think that will be crazy I don't think that's possible but we'll see it may be possible, but we we don't know. So, yep, six thousand, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know. We will run out of fuel before the fact. I don't know. Still have plenty of fuel. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. There we go. Eleven. Eleven. Four, five, six. Okay. There we go. Now all you have to do is add the numbers. Now to be on the safe side, I mean, look how high we are. We're actually gonna start burning from a quarter of the distance, which would be twenty-five hundred meters off the ground. I'm pretty sure I have plenty of fuel to sustain that theory. I don't know if how high I burn from influences anything. I'm just averaging based on distance. I may be awfully wrong. But who knows? 10 kilometers off the ground. Let's see if our little gray man will actually bounce. If he doesn't bounce, we'll, we'll take, I don't know, maybe... 500 meters off and then we'll start taking off taking off taking off until we arrive at the maximum height you can drop into so into gr into the ground on this gravity and still survive okay so, yeah. as you can see we can see the, almost we can see the curvature of the earth from here and I don't know yeah my vessel's too high Yes, 36 kilometers high. If we still survive, we will actually start raising 
we'll, we'll do um, 15,000, then we're going to do 20,000, and then we're going to keep going and keep going uh, until, I don't know, there will be a point where we reach the edge of the atmosphere, and then we'll start checking if uh, Kerbin can actually survive re-entering. If, or sorry, if a Kerbin can actually survive re-entry, and then we'll try shallow angles, um, no shallow angles, steep angles, straight up, straight down angles, and yeah, yeah. As you can see, we reached terminal velocity already. We will not go any faster than this. I mean, it takes, uh, the problem is that this test is kind of aggravating because the more you drop down from, the longer it takes for a Kerbal to reach the ground. I mean, you could be tempted to use the physics time acceleration up there, which goes up to times four, but that may actually affect your Kerbal's physics and he may not survive the fall. So I'm dealing with normal physics here, as you can see. Totally legit, we dropped from 11,456 kilometers, no, 11,456 meters, or 11.4 kilometers high. We're almost reaching the distance we should be, in theory, start thrusting for. I'm going to keep the EVA propellant menu open to see how high we last. So. Yeah, considering I'm talking about thrusting for a quarter distance, eh, I should probably thrust at a, a non-arbitrary distance like 2,500, but um, it's just average. This is not rocket science. This is mm, gamer science, so it hopefully works. Maybe someone already did a video on this, and I'm just maybe blowing, trying to blow smoke up my ass, but we'll see. Also, I didn't touch the physics slider or anything. It's all standard. It's all physics time is the same as when you launch the game for the first time, which is uh, the max physics time delta thing is 0 .0, 0 0.11. We're close for our time of thrust. Six. There we go. Now we're thrusting. I should probably grab a guitar pick or something to hold the shift key. Uh, I found, found a guitar pick. Okay, so I'll just jam it under the key here, so... There we go, so there we go, I'm not holding it. So the get, I uh, essentially jammed the guitar pick under the thing here, so yeah, so I'm, I'm not holding. See? Clapping my hands. I'm not holding any keys. I've just jammed the guitar pick in there to keep me from. Yeah, because I, I really do. You really want to hold a shift key for 10, 12 minutes or something, or five to 10 minutes? Not really. Okay, judging for I, I didn't even lose a quarter of my EVA propellant. Okay, I may actually last more if I. Which means I could probably start uh, rocketing from higher altitudes. Oh, gee. Oh, please let me land on flat ground. If I land on an antenna or something, it will count, but not quite, because, you know. And then to show how lucky I am, I'll probably land on the freaking capsule Memorial Easter Egg, right? Which is probably around this neighborhood here. But we'll see. Okay, almost reaching ground. Still thrusting. As you can see, we're... De okay. Building. Okay, we will land on the flattest ground possible. So let's see. 
And we bounced. Holy shit. We bounced from... We actually fell from 11.389 kilometers free fall into the ground and we didn't die. Fucking awesome. How's that for something? So, as you can see, Kerbals are pretty resistant to high impacts. I'll tell you what, let's actually go even higher though. Let's actually... Uh, let's actually go... Now that I'm pretty confident, we... Yeah? Right? Okay, took four minutes for us to accomplish that. Now let's be really confident and do a really crazy shit. Let's actually, um, uh, Eevee try to free drop from the highest altitude a rocket can cover. Which means we're gonna floor it and SAS and SAS and wish me luck. <laughs> Well, now we're, we're gonna wait until our rocket runs out of fuel. And then we're gonna drop from it as it runs out of fuel. We'll still have some momentum on us and fingers crossed the rocket does not hit us on the way down. Okay, so now we're gonna do extremes. Extremes. Now let's do an arbitrary number. We're gonna, uh. Yeah, we're breaking the sound barrier already. Hopefully the rocket will have enough. Of so we're not gonna. We're gonna wait. We're still gonna have as much momentum as the rocket, though, so. We'll see. I don't like this pss noises, which makes seem like something on the rocket broke, which did it. So, okay, eight. Now I don't care how high we go. I just need to record record the altitude I EVA from. Oh gee, I still have plenty of altitude to cover. Oh my, 15, 16, oh, we're off the atmosphere. Holy shit, we're gonna break our kilometer per second barrier. Holy fuck, we may die. There we go. Let's see, 25, 26, 27, 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Holy shit, I'm not slowing down. 42, 43, 44, 45. <laughs> That's worrying me. Oh no! Oh no! I'm in the edge of the atmosphere. I will leave the at leave the atmosphere if I keep going like this. Fifty one. Fifty. Okay, we're slowing down. Fifty three. Fifty four. Yes, we're slowing down. We will drop eventually. Fifty six. Fifty seven. Fifty eight. Fifty nine. If I survive this high, I will. I don't know what I'll do, man. 62. <laughs> okay, we're stopping. 63. 64. 65. 66. 67. 68. Oh, no, gee. I don't think we're stopping at all, man. 70. Oh no, we're in space. <laughs> oh no, man. 73. Let's actually change to the map. Oh, holy fuck. Look at this. 
That's us? That's our... No, no, no. I I'm actually trying to see which is my apoapsis. <laughs> okay, let's actually check. 79. Okay, I'm slowing down now. Even more. I'm losing altitude. If I survive from this high... Dude, you have no idea. 84, 85, 86. Yeah, I still didn't reach my apple apses. Problem is that I cannot use uh, time acceleration. I know now I'm not using physics time acceleration. Okay, now we're slowing down. 89. 89 90 I'm always reaching I'm all, almost reaching orbit here 91 GG Let me the game I want to slow down 91 92 Okay now we're getting now we're going slower 92 7 Eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one. Yeah, we're slowing down. Ninety-three, nine, three, three, nine, three, three, nine, nine, three, three, nine. Your nine, ninety-three, nine, nine. Okay, now we're going down. <laughs> Gee, I'm, 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 oh man. You don't even know. Come on, put your jetpack, man. Ninety-three, three ninety-nine. There we go. That's how. First off, we have two challenges here. We have to survive re-entry at a very flat angle, which means we're not doing... It, which, which should be correct for heat spreading, I think even for humans, although humans would, wouldn't survive re-entry in real life. So yeah. And then we'll do stuff like that, and then we'll check stuff. Let's see. And my mom won't shut up. Okay. Don't you like when your mom says, Oh, you have to do this. You have to do it. And then she closes the door, opens it again to repeat the same thing. And, and closes the door and then opens it again to say, it. Fuck, I heard the first time, damn it. <sighs> okay. So it's a waiting game now. I think I on the safe side I'm gonna start thrusting from five thousand. Just say. Holy fuck, now I'm scared. I mean uh I'm not scared about maybe surviving the drop, I'm scared that maybe I won't survive he entry. Because I don't have a speedometer, the speedometer is only for vessels, so I don't know how fast I'm actually traveling as I enter the carbon sphere. Or the atmosphere, rather. <laughs> how? There we go. Song stopped, which means we're into the atmosphere. That song only plays when you're in space. Now it's pretty quiet, and there's the man. Hello, man. I can see you from here. Okay, now fingers crossed that we will survive re-entry. Should cross all four fingers. We should have songs from when you're launching or something, I don't know. I like when you know in space engine when you find out black holes they start playing the really cryptic and scare music as the and then you're starting out leading you see the distortion and the huge black spot appears on the screen in front of you. It's quite scary. 
Let's see. I think re-entry will start kicking in once we approach, I believe, is a 25,000 mark. I don't know. If I survive this high re-entry and everything and I still bounce, this will go, this this video with all edits or anything is going straight to, straight to YouTube. Okay, we're not still in re-entry. Okay, we're starting to have re-entry effects. Fingers crossed. You can see faint, faint re-entry effects. As you can see, we're kind of shaking a little bit. Uh, what's actually happening is that we have a very small mass, which means that we're shaking slightly because the we're hitting a dense atmosphere, and what that atmosphere is actually doing is actually slowing us down. We're still not safe, though. We're still a little outside the... We're still on the... Uh, thin part of the atmosphere. Okay, so apparently we slowed down. And that's our ship right there. Of course it has more mass in it, which and is more aerodynamic too, which is why it's dropping faster. We're still not safe though. We could actually be killed during re-entry. We're still not safe, which is why I'm silent. Or perhaps I think we are indeed safe. I just hope I don't fall on the water. Because if I do fall in the water, this whole test will be skewed, and yeah. Ow! Oh wait a second, I am safe. I'm inside the atmosphere already. It didn't, as you can see, the re-entry effects were very minor. So, yeah. I think I'm positive we can survive this high. You know, from edge of the atmosphere, or outside the atmosphere, into the atmosphere, and then this much height, but I think we will survive, I'm, I'm pretty positive we will, because once we hit the atmosphere, the only thing holding us off is terminal velocity, and we can't fall, oh gee, I'm gonna fall in the water, isn't it, oh no, please, Please, no, I don't want to fall in the water. If I fall in the water, my testing will be skewed. Because it's very possible for you to survive a fall in the water from this high. Because water does not kill you immediately as ground does. Water you sink for a bit. Right. Now, I'm, I'm being pretty pessimist here. I will fall on solid ground. Fingers crossed. I think with a spacesuit, when it has a sound dampening anything, falling from a, from this high would actually be a pretty calming experience because you don't hear anything. You just hear the faint sound of wind as you pass by, and maybe your clothes agitating from the speed, but not much. It's much like uh, someone described uh, traveling or reaching a top speed with a Bugatti Veyron. You, you, the car is so well engineered, you don't feel anything. The car just goes and you just feel slightly, slight shaking, but other than that, you don't feel like on some other cars that as the car reaches a top speed, it's, it's almost feels like it's shaking and everything and feels like it's gonna break. Not on that. Oh gee, oh no, I'm gonna fall on water. Okay. As you can see, I'm going left slightly. 
Which means that I, I don't know, maybe I should correct my trajectory because I want to fall on the ground. So. And I like to think I have some leeway on the position I want to stand on. No, I want to be. I want to turn that. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, it's almost certain. Certain I fall on the ground. On the water. We're just going to see. As you can see, I'm going sideways slightly because the cur curbin is spinning under me as I descend in a straight line. I mean, if I land from this, it's okay. I mean, I would love to the thing to be on. Because uh, I think that for the experiment to be okay, I actually have to take off at an angle, the same angle Kerbin spins, which means I'll fall at almost the same place I, l I left off, I lift off from. But it's okay. We'll see. Jabadai is a brave to yeah, um, I um, yeah, there's no way I'll, I will fall in the water. Look how far from the coast I am. And that's my ship. The breeze, actually, because the ship was more aerodynamic, was more anything that I wasn't, so it landed first. Humans are not very aerodynamic, and this guy is happy as all assholes. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm, I almost should start thrusting from here. Two... One... There we go. Gonna let me jam my guitar pick in here. There we go. Okay, now we see how long feel is. As you can see, I'm still going sideways a little bit, which means I'm actually getting away from the coast. And I can hear faint raining on the window at my back, so... Yeah. I don't know, what do you guys think? You think I'll survive? Huh? Oh man, if I survive, we to all assholes. Okay, so no answers from her. Okay, I just have to deduct. Because if I fall in the water, it's gonna be a neg. It's gonna be, you know, sea level, which means I will have fall from ninety-three, almost a hundred kilometers free, free fall. Of course, this is a game, and we can do silly things, but you should never do this in real life because you'll most likely die. There's no way you'll bounce off the ground. I think you'll actually be tired of falling for so long before you even reach the ground, though. It, w it would take you several hours to reach the ground. So, if in that distance, you know, 9, 100,000... It's not even the edge of the atmosphere on the planet Earth. That would actually be really high, but wouldn't even be close. Because, come on, we're talking about rockets. Ro rocket needs to accelerate to leave planet Earth at, I believe, 120,000 kilometers. Imagine how much fuel that uses. Of 
We'll see. We're almost reaching ground, so yeah, let's let's focus on our happy dude here. It's a lonely wait. I'm not gonna do physics ac acceleration. Okay, this uh, <laughs> for some people. Uh, okay, this uh, I am nonchalantly falling, but I'm actually t at terminal velocity. But it doesn't look like it because I'm going down so slowly. I think I'll actually run off propellant before the fact, so I should probably start burning from I don't know, maybe one five hundred kilometers or something. Oh gee, falling off from is so boring, man. Almost there, guys. Don't lose your faith in me as of yet. Okay, now I think I'm actually gonna stop thrusting, and I'm and I'm gonna use the rest for my um for the last 500 meters. As I think of what I'll eat for dinner. Okay. Okay, now this old jam my guitar pick in in here again. There we go. Okay, fingers crossed. Last 100 meters. Will we survive? Will we survive from this high? Almost 100 kilometers. And we fucking did. Fucking hell, motherfucker. Son of a bitch, we survived from a free fall. No, not a free fall, but there he is. Proof is in the pudding. As you can see, a moving Jabadiah. He's perfectly safe. But more importantly, he survived. Uh, my main uh, work, uh, my mm, the worrying thing I was actually thinking of was actually he would actually die during re-entry. But yeah, as you can see, he clearly survives a drop on water. I don't know if he does on ground, but I'll have to recalibrate the tests. But as 